Hello, 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 everybody. Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. Today is not so Sunday, so I'm not going to give you the spiel, but this is a continuation video of what I started on Sunday before the lights went out. Because <laughs> they went out for a long period of time while it was like 110 degrees outside. It was horrible. But as you can tell, we, we have power now, so that's a good thing. <laughs> so that's a positive. But it did take 11 hours, a little over 11 hours for us to get our power back on because that's what happens when the power goes out. Anyway, let's see who's here. We got Rosie, Sheila, Linda, Mary, Beverly, Brenda, whoop, where did it go, where did it go? Gloria, Donna, Pat, Shauna, Paula, Terry, Carol, Kelly, June, Kathy, Vicki, Lori, Becca, uh, Kim, Karen, June, Judy, Susan, Bettina, and Nan. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, everybody. So, Sunday, obviously, like I was saying, the power went out during the live stream, so I really didn't get very far. I got as far as showing you pinning, which everything is still laying on the desk exactly where it was. So, if I wanted to, like, download both these videos, I could combine them because everything is exactly how it was. Um, but I'm not going to do that because you could just watch two videos. Anyway, so this is a continuation of the fourth, which was Sunday. And that's what we're doing. We're going to finish this little project, which is this little pinwheel table runner right here. So it's a little pinwheel table runner that came in my Open Gates quilt subscription box. And it was called the Dots on You Body Pillow or Table Runner. That's what it was called. So let's go to the cutting table so that you can see where I continued showing you guys I'm using triangles on a roll paper and I started to pin it and then the power went out so <laughs> I'm gonna continue pinning it where I was which is away from where I'm gonna be sewing so I don't want to pin on the the diagonal lines that run across this paper I just want to pin um, away from those so that I can sew on the arrowed lines or what it would be which is the dotted lines and I'll, I'll hold this up a little bit closer for you guys to see so you can see there is dotted lines across this we're going to be sewing around along those dotted lines in order of the way the arrows are pointing well technically you don't have to do it that way but that's just the way I'm going to do it so we're going to go to the sewing machine so you can see up close and personal of how this works what size is your triangle paper the triangle paper is for three and a half inch finished half square triangles. So here we are at the sewing machine. Here's the paper. This is us talking about. So there's arrows on here. So you can see that you put your foot down and it's just like paper piecing. You're just going to sew on the dotted line and you're going to follow it around. And with paper, it's nice to have a smaller stitch length, so like a 1.5 to 1.8. And I gotta find my foot pedal because that decided it won't take off on me. And we're just gonna sew on this line. Yep. And I'm gonna follow these arrows so I could stop right here and pivot if I want, or I could sew across, or however you wanna do it. Hold on. These are three and a half inch finished, yes. Oh, three and a half inch. Yes. I'm gonna come across here to this one, and then I'm just going to sew this way. And I can't sew a straight line to save my life, so obviously <laughs> uh, my lines are not straight. Even with paper. I don't know why I suck at sewing on straight lines, but I do. So 
as you can see, I'm just sewing on the line as best as I can. And you're probably supposed to cross over, but I don't on these. It's going to get cut apart either way. And then I have to sew the inner lines. Right now I'm just sewing the outer. I'm going to start sewing in here and sew this inner side. Oops, right there. That's where I want to stop. And probably try not to kill yourself with all these pins, because there's a lot. Alright, so that one is all sewn on all of the lines. Let's go to this cutting mat and they see... Like nails. Oh, thank you. They need to be redone, because they're like getting, you know, super long again. My nails grow pretty darn quick. So I go once a month and get them done, but I let them get as long as whatever <laughs> before I do. So now we need to cut away everything. So I'm going to cut away first on the black line around the outside right here. So I'm just lining my ruler up. Oops, let's get that little piece right there. So this is scrap fabric right here. I'm just going to put this with my fabric stash. And then... Turn the paper, go along this black line, go along this black line. I'm trimming on all the black lines, the solid lines, not the stripe lines. And once I get around all the sides, then I'm going to go down the middle like this so again on the solid lines cut all these apart and then we're going to turn them and cut the sides apart and then we're going to hand them to Scott to press and this should give us a ton of half square triangles Turn. so now I'm going to cut them in half this way and then the two sides in half like this and then you'll see where's the paper right here we'll have a half square triangle that's perfectly perfect because it was done with paper and I'm gonna let Scott press them with the papers still attached and then we'll pull the papers off oh I'm gonna press them with the paper on yep Yep, press them all to this dark color, not the white, just like this. And I iron the, pa the paper? Yep, the paper's going to keep it stabilized so that it doesn't shift on you, mister. Iron it this way? Yes. And these, I put iron paper, and I would screw it up. Well, now I don't need the paper after this. Okay. So again, I'm just cutting on the black solid lines. This helps have like, if you want to be super perfect with your half square triangles, this is about the perfectest that they can get. Although once I start sewing them together, they just get off anyway. So 
I never really worry about that, but we're doing it with the papers because it sent us with the papers for the kit with my subscription box. And yesterday I would have came on, but the devil was playing games with my stomach and it was like an exorcist exorcism needed to happen or something. <laughs> so you guys didn't see me yesterday. It was horrible. I think the heat from the day before and the foods that I ate got to me and made it a really bad day yesterday. Okay, the blue, right? Yep. Okay. Alright, so now we're going to take the well, next... Plus we slept a lot yesterday because we didn't really get to bed until yeah. after the AC came back on. Yeah, we had a really rough night. We, we were awake the whole night... Scott like got two hours, but then I accidentally woke him because I was uh, getting stuffy in my room. So I ended up leaving my room and coming out to the couch and I accidentally woke him up <laughs> coming to lay on the couch next to him. So that made it rough, but he got up and went to the gym and then I tried to sleep in the pool on the floaty and then I tried to sleep on my hammock and then I tried to sleep on the couch while well, I was all over the place because I could not sleep for the life of me during that power outage. It's very hot here so it didn't make it a very good night. So we slept in the next day when we finally got power back on. So I'm just pinning my paper, and this time I'm going to sew across and down and show you guys that way, because it's like almost the same thing, but maybe there's more pivoting that way. But we're going to just sew across the lines this time. I've got to make sure that the paper is on here flat for it to work correctly. Oops, come on. Okay, stay. And one more pin. Tell me, yes, the gym had AC. Yes, the gym had AC. So most, okay, so a lot of town was out. It was like over 50 um, poles that were uprooted from the ground, the power poles, and thrown. So that's why we lost power uh, a lot of bullhead city almost 40,000 residents in the whole mojave county lost power it was crazy all right so let's go to the sewing machine over 1200 houses in our town yeah 1200 40, houses 000 in the whole county yeah yeah our town had a lot and the power went out everywhere initially and then where like cj works the stores they went back on and then um yeah, so we went, like, by the time it was a little while had passed, it was like an hour or so, we are like, let's just go somewhere that has AC. So we went to Ross, and I bought new socks, because, well, we wandered around Ross, and then we ended up at his parents' house, so it's a good thing that his mom and husband live in town, because we went over there and stayed there till 10, but I needed to take my meds. We could have stayed the night there, but CJ was coming home from work, so... You know, we just decided to stay here. Well, plus, we originally thought the power was going to yeah, be back on by 11. Yeah, and we thought it was going to be back on by 11. That's what the company texted me. Because I had set up the text alerts for when the power should be back on. Okay, now you can see I'm crossing over. Again, trying to stay on that line. over again. Break the thread right there. Now do all the... Oops, where's my snips? My thread didn't break all the way. Now to do the opposites, which is this way.
I'm just sewing on the dotted line, as you can see. Pivoting. I should have sewn on every side checking checking yes 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 and yes okay so I sewed everything now to cut it apart again before cutting make sure you remove all your pins because you definitely don't want to break a blade or slice through a finger trying to cut past a needle all right, so let's grab the ruler again. I'm going to start by cutting this long scrap off first because I save my scraps. So I definitely don't want this to go to waste. Okay. Heck no. Come on. There we go. So this is not going to go to waste. I shall use that another time. Get that paper into the no, trash. No fabric. <laughs> we come right here, trimming on all the solid line. Hey, right there! Come on. And one more side. So if you've never used triangle paper, it's actually pretty easy to use. Um, and you have a little bit more accuracy with your half square triangles. Is it time for a new blade, they're asking? Uh, no, it's because I keep hitting, I have some dings in my mat. I know it's a brand new mat too, but this mat got dinged pretty quickly. And I keep hitting over the dings. Like, I have a really big ding right here. Oh, I thought that was thread. No. Holy cow, that's huge. Yeah, I have dings in my mat like crazy. I just put this blade in like in two months mat? ago. Yep. Okay. Yeah, this is as fresh of a blade as it can get. For now. For now. I try not to change them too often because uh, with my video filming, I would probably go through way too many blades so in the beginning I did too I changed my blade all the time in the beginning and I tried to slow down on it because we were buying way too many blades and I thought about a sharpener setup but then I was like nah I'll just stick with buying the blades you make crumb quilts with your scraps? yes I make crumb quilts with my scraps or I just make all sorts of stuff with my scraps so I try to make the best use of what I can with all my fabric. That way, whatever I do have scraps, I can make something cool with them. Can you buy triangle paper at Quilt Shop? Yep. You guys could find triangle paper on all sorts of quilt shops. You can find it on Fat Quarter Shop. Um, you can find it on, I think Sewing Machines Plus even sells triangle paper on a roll. And Connecting Threads probably has it too. Lots of places sell it. All right, now we're gonna do our last two, which is the purple and the white. Once these are all pressed and everything is done, this will go together pretty quick. Does our local shop have it? Should I put yeah, that our local too? shop should have it too. That one shop, right? Yep. Mark shop. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna lay my paper on here and I'm gonna start pinning it. So it's a very rare thing that you guys see me ever pin like this, but. Does the paper make the blade dull? Um, it can dull it a little, yes. I do actually have a paper only cutting rotary blade. You just don't use it. I just don't <laughs> use it because it's hanging on the wall behind me. And it's something I never just reach and grab, which I should, but I don't use paper very often, so it's this is a very rare thing for you guys to see me using pins on paper. 
it's rare to see you using pens, period. Yeah. But yeah, paper can dull it. Paper can dull your needles, or your need, your sewing machine needles as well. But I am using a, um, oh my goodness, what's the word for it? I can't think of it. You're going to have to give me a second to think of it. A titanium um, needle on my sewing machine. And I found that that is actually sewing twice as long as the original ones that I was using to begin with. All right, let's go back to the machine. All right, so again, you can just follow each line and pivot a bazillion times like I did the first time. Or you can cross over. It's nice to have a knee lift for stuff like this. So if you have a machine with a knee lift on it, it helps. One more stitch right there. So while I'm right here, before I exit, I'm gonna go in here and stitch around this. You can see I did not have to break thread that time. I just continuously sewed. All four, 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 four. Yep, I got on both sides all the way around. So let's repeat those steps. Remove pins. Don't stab yourself in the process. Because <laughs> that's what I do. Ow, see, you know, it's just hanging from my finger. <laughs> <laughs> I am 100% a poke myself pinner. I don't know how to avoid it. It just happens. I don't know how to stop poking myself. It's okay, honey. Yep. Just hitting those divots in my mat. Alright, so those can just go there. Cutting on the solid lines. Come on, line up. All right, and then cut them apart, and then cut them apart again. Can you flip that over? Yeah, I can flip it over. Although this one goes to the other side, I think. Yeah. I, I think that that boo-boo goes to the other side. All the way through. 
But yeah, I can flip it over. I just haven't yet because I'm lazy. You know that saying, work with what you got. Well, I'm working with what I got. And what I got is a big boo-boo in my mat. <laughs> Quite a few boo-boos, actually. All right, and this gets pressed towards the purple, Mr. Scotty. So, I mean, it does... I guess it does make it a little easier because um, half score triangles tend to stretch really easily because it's all on the bias. So having the paper there when you're pressing and everything is keeping the fabric from stretching on that bias. So it keeps it nice and flat before you get to sewing it. So keeping the papers on is a good thing during the pressing, but you can sure take them off if you want before that. And again, I didn't sew perfectly on these lines because I cannot sew straight. It's like maybe I have crooked eyes or something, you know? You want to know how Thumper did without the AC? Oh, Thumper was fine. He's freshly shaved, so it didn't phase him a bit. He slept through it. Because that, well, until we were awake, and then he wanted to annoy us. All right, so there's all that. And while he finishes pressing, this is all we do to remove the papers. So all you do, since I sewed a very tight stitch length, is I just pull it off, and then this side comes right off like that. And sometimes it gets stuck right here on the end. Oh, come on. Just like this. See, I try to show you guys something, and then it doesn't, doesn't want to work. Doesn't wanna work. All right, so my paper is off that. And the only other thing I need to do is trim off my dog ears because I want my half square triangles to lay nicely. So I guess I'll just do that while the paper is still on. And you can use scissors. I just use the rotary cutter for this <laughs> because it's literally right here in my hand. What's your quick? With that time? Yeah. I'm faster with it than, you know. So how soon they're going to get some of that paper? Yeah, this, it helps, I think, especially for beginners, because it gives you a line to sew on. There's so many different projects that you can do. They have not just triangle paper, but they have paper for all sorts of blocks nowadays. So um, I'm trying to think. If Becca's still here, maybe she'll know what I'm talking about. You can make s snail trail blocks. You can make square and a square blocks they have it's the it's so emma brand i'm pretty sure makes all those different papers and the fat quarter shop sells them and they're really cool because you can do so many things and they have so many different blocks available now on paper which gives you a little bit more accurate of a block so for beginners i would say that's a it's a good try because you're sewing on the line until you get used to sewing them on your own you know do you ever pull up your stitches when ripping off paper? Um, if you use a very small stitch, a, a very big stitch length, then yeah, you would pull up your stitches. But no, I don't because I always take my stitch length down. Yep, Becca's on. She's saying that it's like so I know Emma. It's, yeah. I don't know the exact names, but of the all the blocks that they have, but. It's definitely that company. So it's just perforated for you to pull it right off. And it should work nicely both directions. And if you leave paper in, it's okay because guess what? It will fall apart completely in the wash. Oh my goodness, come on. Just make sure you're holding it nicely so that you're not yanking your block on the bias because this diagonal grain right here is the bias and you don't want to stretch that. So make sure you're keeping your fingers when you're ripping your paper off on the seam. Holding them on the seam actually helps. 
also. See how my fingers are on the seam when I pull my paper off? It keeps it from stretching. So not bad for, you know, and I, the other triangle on a roll paper is actually a little bit more thinner than this. This is actually kind of thick than the other stuff I've used before in the past. So just know other brands of it make thinner or looser paper. I mean, thinner or looser, thinner or thicker paper. It just depends. Some is like regular copy paper and some is not. This one feels more like copy paper, though, to me. Coffee paper? Copy paper. Oh, copy? Yeah, copy, like, is in... C-O-P-Y? Yeah, like There's copy machine. Copy. It doesn't help having long nails to get the little pieces that get stuck. You want me to help with that? Well, yeah, you can start pulling papers, too. Why well, that one left the iron? So this is all I'm doing, is pulling papers, while you guys stare at me pulling papers. <laughs> but what we're going to be doing is making pinwheel blocks with these. Am I done ironing? Should I put this thing now? For now, yeah. One lady said earlier, pulling the paper off is for while watching TV. <laughs> yeah, you can pull it off while watching TV or have the kids pull it off. Just make sure you train them to do it where they're actually, you know, pulling it off while holding the seam. Because you know how some kids are like, oh, hey, look, and they start ripping and they start disorienting your block. Yeah, how am I supposed to rip it off so I don't ruin it? So just fold the paper back like this, you know and then rip it by holding the seam and then pull the opposite side off mm -hmm. like this just hold the seam but I gotta cut these little guys off too well that one's got no paper okay. I'm just cutting my dog ears off real quick I'll start doing blues you do poipo well, I'm cutting the dog ears off first okay but you know what I meant yeah This should go pretty quick though. It's just paper that you're ripping off. Train your husbands to help. Train the grandkids. You know. It goes quick. Is that what I'm here? Am I the trained person? Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you guys can just watch me do this and then next we'll start making some pinwheels I think I'm just gonna go buy the pitcher honestly because I already know how to make a pinwheel so I really don't need the directions until it comes time for the borders I don't know what order they have it I think it's just the one border directly on after the pinwheels honestly all right so I'm gonna just keep pulling the paper off and then the only colors I need to trim the dog ears off of is the blue Hoping you guys all are having a good week so far, since it's only Tuesday. Well, Monday was a holiday for most Yesterday people. was a holiday. So, for the Americans, it was, what, Labor Day, right? Yeah. Yes. It's an American holiday for Labor Day. <laughs> he says, I'm the apprentice to the master sister. <laughs> yep. Alright, just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep ripping. See, this is better than seam ripping, right? Ripping the paper. <laughs> you can see, they come off pretty easily. Only problem is, is 
the paper. Does it go in the recycle bin or does it go in the trash? It is paper, so it should go in the recycle bin. But our recycle bin is a big, huge open bin, and all this would blow away <laughs> on the next yes. windstorm. Well, every recycle day is windy. Yeah. So when it goes to dump it, it all blows out as he's dumping it in. So this will go in the trash, although if you can bag up your recycle, then that's even better. But we're not allowed. It says in our on our bins not to bag it, which is kind of dumb, but... So this is just going to go in the trash, but technically it is recycle. Well, the rest of our county quit recycling a year or two back and our town is going to end up quitting soon. Oops. Because of the mess everybody makes with the recycle anyway. Yeah. So it's kind of a moot point. As much as it's great to save the world, but the companies stopped doing it. <laughs> yeah. That's sad. Very sad. But if you do recycle and you're like out in the boonies, you could also put it in a burn barrel and burn it. I used to do that where I used to live out in the middle of nowheresville. Okay, this one's pulling the threads there. You want to do that one because I don't want to get in trouble. It's pulling the threads up there though. See that? No, it's still stitched. Okay, well I didn't know. That's why I gave it to you. All right, so I should have um, four inch half square triangles. All right, now I'm just gonna cut the dog ears off of all the blues, and then we'll start making some blocks. That was my pile done. Right? Yeah, but I gotta cut these off real quick. Did you tear all the papers off yours? Yep. Oh, well, you're quick. I'm a quick. I'm a quick one. going to be a cute table runner. And the cool part is, is it's going to have polka dots as its border. And I like polka dot fabric. Scotty. Four. There's one down there that was fighting with you. you can do it that one. Okay. And one more. So all I need to do now is bring up my trash can. And throw it in the trash. Let's get the dog ears off of that real quick. The majority of mine's one piece. I didn't make a zillion pieces like in All right. And there we have it. Triangles done on a paper. So now we're making pinwheels. So we're just going to make pinwheels just like this. I'm gonna make a ton of these all in the same colorway. So it looks like it's four of one, two, four. I'm just gonna stack them all up. I'm going to slide them all through the machine and do some quick and fast in a hurry sewing because that's what I do. Yes, you are very quick. Alright, so I'm just organizing this so that way all I have to do is run them through one right after the other and have all my half my um, pinwheels made at the same exact time. Oh, well, there's a good idea. This lady puts it in, in her compost for her garden. Oh, that works. Yeah, paper in the compost. That works. You can also take 
in, burn it in a burn barrel and then use the ashes for in your compost too. So I'm going to get four of each, and you guys are going to be able to see me just chain piece all of these through. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm just going to stack them all up like this. Bottoms and tops. And I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and I'm literally going to pull one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, over and over and over until they are all sewn through. So let's go. So you guys could see me at the same time. I need my seam guide though. It's magnetic and it's probably stuck to, oh look, my scissors. All right, so I'm gonna put this on here so that I have a quarter inch seam allowance continuously throughout all of my pieces. Get two cameras going? Yeah. Oh. Yep, so I'm just gonna take the top two, right sides together. I'm gonna nest the seam down here at the bottom. They nest beautifully and I'm gonna change my stitch length back to a two because it really don't need to be that tight. And then I'm gonna take the bottom two. And again, right okay. sides together and they're gonna nest right up, right here at the top. Oh, you have your two cameras going on, I'm gonna show off. Two He's trying to show you guys my bag that I made. All right, so I'm just gonna keep going and continuously sew all these through. See? Ha ha. Told you I would show it off. <laughs> Oops. Come on. Get back together. There we go. Seam guide. Yes, I love my seam guide so much. So much. So much. Yeah, that's what I'm on. Come on, line up. So they're in sets of twos and when I cut them apart, it'll be cut apart in sets of twos. How I get things done so fast is multiply Ch putting things in chain orders. So now we're on to the blue. Two seconds and we'll okay. All right, sorry, guys. So what I'm going to do real quickly. I was, was just I? trying to tell him that I showed One, off the two, bag. Three. You didn't want me to, but One, I two, did. Three. So I'll say it out loud. While I'm sewing these, what I'm going to do, since I love my seam guide so much, I'm going to give two of them away. So hold on two seconds though. Can't do anything just yet because I'm sewing. But we are going to start custom open oh, right there. Edit. Custom. 
All right. So we are going to have a giveaway for my subscribers. You're just gonna have them get a number, or what are you gonna have them do? No, I'm going to start a giveaway for you guys. So oh just type explanation. I don't even know what is it. What it is it? What is it? What is the explanation? Enter. I think it's enter. Yeah. Ex explanation enter. That's what it is. Try it. It's only free shipping in the US. <laughs> Let's see. Is it working for enter? Oh, it's raffle. Okay. It is raffle. All right. Explanation raffle. I knew it was something like that. Why is. Yeah, it's Becky said. It says yep. raffle. I didn't see the thingy because I can't see that from this screen. <laughs> I knew it was something. Where did they go anyway? So these are the seam guides that I'm giving away. Brand new seam guides. Look at that, because I love them so much. They're magnetic seam guides. Yep. You can buy 10 of them at Walmart for 15 bucks. So we bought a bunch to give away. <laughs> All right. Back to sewing. They're yeah. kind of big though. They're bigger. Than <laughs> Some of them are. So here we go. That's going to be going on for a bit while I sew these. Raffle is flagged as a bad word. Okay, Becca, we'll fix that right now. Um, Why is raffle a bad word? I don't know. I don't know how to change it either. I got to go into the thing real quick. Um, close back, custom, view, how yeah. do I change it, Becca, I forgot. And she said it's the same issue she had, it's broken. Okay, she hold on the guys. settings to make it enter. Back. So then I'll we'll have to go back and do it again. Yep, it. hold on. I gotta figure out how to get rid of it. Edit. Tell them to stop entering around. Stop entering, you guys, for a second, because <laughs> I'm trying to fix it. General. Uh, save. Where is the word for it? Giveaway settings. It's in the current. Yep. Book. Enter. Save. Alright, view. Cancel, confirm, custom. All right, here we go. Now it should work in like two seconds. Now try the word enter. The word enter e should work. Explanation enter. Explanation enter. No spaces. Should work. Well, they're all typing in at once, so hold on. Yeah. Have to give the machine. A give it a off. second t to catch up. Is your magnetic thing safe on all machines? Yes, it is safe on all machines, unless you have like a embroidery machine or something, where it has like the embroidery electronics down here in the sewing space. Then I wouldn't probably use it. But this whole area right here, where it is, this is magnetic. You can put a magnet on here. All base plates have just the machine sewing stuff underneath there. So technically, I wouldn't see a problem with it on every machine. But I, the only ones I would be concerned about would be embroidery machines. Okay, that one was flipped, so let's look at this real quick. This goes that way. Yep, and yep, okay. It's not working either. Maybe enter isn't working. Try one more time with HST. All right, guys. It seems to be working. It seems to be working on my end. I see. It's popping up. 
Left and right, it's saying always something fun. Steam Guide raffle is going on for subscribers. You oh, it's not giving their names. That's what it's oh, doing. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not telling them they entered, and there's nothing here. So okay, let's never mind. cancel, confirm. Ay, 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 what is this? Let's change that word again. We're going to try it one more time. We can just do the number way. Oh, that's got to be... All right, let's see if this word works. Custom. Edit. Save. And start. Try the word seam. S-E-A-M. Hold on, just let one person try it. Let Becca try it. <laughs> and then try the word seam, Becca. And then we'll let everybody else do it. <laughs> If it works. If it see, doesn't work, then. To see if the thing's picking it it up. gave me a ticket for myself. It gave Moldy Lasagna a ticket. Okay, then it must be working. If you oh, yep. It's entering. Okay, so explanation seam. Sorry, guys. This is like. Oh, yeah. Now I know what Becca goes through when she does all this. <laughs> I can't do all this at the same time, but I did. So it's working with the word seam now. <laughs> It must be lots of giveaways. This is the first time we've ever had an issue. Yeah, I'm, I've never had an issue with the raffle before. The word raffle. That's so weird. Not on my thing yet, but I guess there's always the first for everything. So I'm just making my pinwheels. <laughs> I got a little bit distracted, but it's going now. All right. I said we should do a PD. We play a house. We pick a magic word. Yeah. That's what we should do next time. Magic words. That'll take forever too. All right. Almost done. Then I gotta sew the twos together. That half square triangle is a little small, or that one's a little big, but guess what? I don't care. <laughs> there we go. All that for you guys to enter to win for two, se <laughs> two people to win for seam guides. <laughs> That's funny. That's okay. Whatever works, right? <laughs> Alright, so once you get them sewn into sets like this, where it's chain pieced together, all I'm going to do now is snip them apart in sets of two. So we're going to go right here to just facing me. So there's a whole long stream, string, every set of two. So these bottom two go together. So separate them. And that way, when you open them up, you will have your pinwheel. So you just would put them right sides together. You would push the seam one way or the other. You don't really have to pin it. You can if you wanted to, but you don't have to. Some people will press the seam open. I'm not pressing it open. I'm just going to press one one way and one the other. Nesting my seam in the middle and then sewing on beyond that to the end. So that when I'm done, I will have pinwheels just like this. So I'm going to continue on separating them in sets of two, opening them up, and it, you can finger press them from one side or the other, however you want to do it. I was just showing you guys real quick. <laughs> so you could finger press it and then slide it through. Okay, come on. Come on. Matching the ends up. And there's pinwheel number two. So, I'm going to put you guys back on the sewing machine so that you can watch that. Watch me separate them, finger press them, and sew them. So, I'm just finger pressing one side or the other, right sides together, and nesting these two seams right here. Like I said, some people press open. I don't bother with that. I just press one side or the other. And then we have the next two, so these would go... Press the finger press the seams one way or the other. 
right sides together, nestle your two seams. And this way, if you want to be lazy like me and not get up for the moment, you can continuously sit here and sew all of your half square triangles at the same exact time. So everything is neatly being done. It's giving two tickets. Yeah, it's fine. It doesn't really matter. I, I can't control any of that. I don't like playing with it. All right, just same thing over and over. Finger press, slide them through. Finger press, slide them through. And I'm also watching out for this intersection right here. You can see on the camera, I'm using white thread, so it's hard to see. But that intersection where these come across and this comes across, I'm aiming for that so that way my pinwheels, if you have a quarter inch seam, that should match right at a quarter inch. If I'm using my seam guide, when you open this up, you can see that the center of the pinwheel came together nicely. I mean, this one's off a little bit, but that's because they weren't all perfect. But you get where I'm going here. You get as best as you possibly can get of pinwheels. Right sides together. Ah. Nest the seam, line it up. Sew it on through. And my friend Becca is coming on in five minutes for her live stream. So I don't, if you guys want to go over there and watch, I don't mind you leaving. Yeah, she just said yeah. she's gone. So if you guys feel like going over there and watching, she's doing, I think, puzzle mystery stuff or sew along stuff. I forgot already because we were just talking before this video. I figured I'd be almost done by the time she came on, so... So I don't mind if you guys want to go over there and watch. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to her channel yet, just in, in explanation. I put the thing oh, in. Oh, yeah. Scott, Scott put a link. Click on the link. Click on the link and you guys can head over to her channel and subscribe. And if anything, watch both of us at the same time. <laughs> Which is what I've done before when two of my favorite people come on at the same time. I have one on one device and one on another. He's got a bag flying behind my head. All right, line it up. All right, oops, I didn't mean to do that. I cut my thread, but that's okay. Again, I'm just finger pressing my seams one way or the other. It really does not matter. Right sides together. And now I have one more pinwheel after this to sew. And then all we're gonna do is lay them out and sew them all together, add a border and be done. That's how quick today's project is, which would have been Sunday if there wasn't a storm. Yep, she's doing uh, cotton cuts. Puzzle mystery. I know it was a puzzle mystery. Alright, so now that I have sewn all of my wonderful blocks, we need Scott to press them all. So I'm just going to give him a finger press before he I'm presses ironing. them. I mean, I'm yep, you're ironing again, mister. So we're going to come over here to I mean, the... I wasn't allowed to iron at all. Now today, all of a sudden, I can't. Yep, we're going to finger bad. press all these so that way they're prepped for Mr. Scotty. Because bad. pinwheels, if you don't press your seam open, pinwheels do have a big, you need to hammer it down kind of lump in the middle, which is perfectly fine. Don't freak out. Your iron may or may not get stuck up against that and get it a little dirty because that's happened to me plenty of times on plenty of fabric. And since this is white, it's probably going to happen. But we're just going to pre-finger press these so that way when he gets it, it goes easier for him. So I should have four of each color, so four blues, four purples, four oranges of my pinwheels, and then 
I'm going to press them and then sew them together in whatever order the picture says. Would a clapper work really well for the center of the pinwheel? Yeah, you can use a clapper on it after you iron it while the seam is nice and hot. Lay a clapper on it to get it to lay flat. I've never really bothered with open seams. I don't really press open unless I absolutely have to. So with pinwheels, I just press them back and call it a day. What's a clapper? It is a big piece of wood that you lay on it while the block is hot. Mm. Because yeah, the middle's all... Mm -hmm. It gets stuck to the block and it wants to shift it because your ironer is going to get stuck right here on this middle piece and it's going to want to create a little divot and you don't want that. So getting your block as flat as possible is what you're looking for. How long is this raffle going on? 20 minutes. 20 oh, minutes. Yeah, I'm just going to let it sit on in the background. Well, it's just going and going. Right? Oh, it's fine. Up. Well, I can't read any of it. It's not fine. All right, so there's that. And while while he's pressing all that, I guess we'll just. Do you ever use spray starch on your fabric? Yes, I do spray starch, and I use fontless spray starch. That's what I prefer the best. Um, yeah. The plate said it will not hurt anything. Yes, the seam guides shouldn't hurt anything because it's a metal plate and it's protecting everything underneath. Well, you've been using one for yeah. years. And I've been using years. it for years. <laughs> so yeah, I've been using it for years and never had a problem. I use it on my little brother machine and I just did a video and posted it on Facebook of the computerized part that's inside the sewing machine. I took my machine apart, this one right here, and showed you guys the inside. There is nothing that it's going to affect. There's no computer stuff down in that section on the computerized machine. So it should be okay. <coughs> yes, we're okay. It was it was a crazy storm that other night. Let me tell you. Alrighty, let me clean some of this up right here next to me so that way we can sew this together quickly like. Let me put my, my project bag that it was in <laughs> is now empty. So I could just go over there. My scraps don't need to be to right here. Using color order for you? No, I'm okay, gonna good, just because I kind of got them out of order. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm just gonna put my scraps right here. All these scraps. I'm gonna pull the papers out of it because I have a fabric only scrap bin that I try not to put paper in. Paper goes in one bin. Fabric goes in another. How do you take care of the bump or not in the middle? Um, I just iron it and it should lay pretty flat so here you can see it's pretty flat look at that you, I mean you could feel it but if you want to lay a clapper on it go ahead but I really have not had a problem and when I long arm quilt over this my foot goes right over it some people have issues when they free motion quilt over that and if you're gonna be free motion quilting over a pinwheel with this I would say um, lift up your pressure foot pressure yeah. gauge so that you don't get stuck on it all right. Big one there. I'm gonna move all this stuff out of my way. Come on. Right there, right there. Again, there's a giveaway going on for a magnetic seam guide. So if you want to win a magnetic seam guide, now's the time. All right, I guess, what does it say for the borders? Piecing, piecing, piecing. It doesn't say. Do you use it? a wool pressing mat? I have wool in my ironing board, but I do not use a wool pressing mat. I have a little tiny one hey, you right don't here, like the smell of it. but I don't like the smell of it at all, whatsoever. It doesn't say. Trying to read the directions so that way I know how much fabric was right here. Where is the cuttings? Backing from the triangle. Ah, three and a half. Okay. All right, that's three and a half inches. I'm going to cut three and a half inch strips off of this. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to have Scott press it first because it's kind of wonky. You have to be present to win? Yes, you need to be present to win, please. Well, 
Well, they don't have to be present, but how would they know? They have to watch the yeah. replay in order to know. Yeah. That's why it's best to be present. All right, we're going to come over here to the cutting mat now so that we can lay we're this call out. A winner as soon as it's done, right? Yep, as soon as it's done, I will be calling a winner. You have to be in the U.S. to get free shipping, though. Yeah. All right, here we go. What does my picture say? It's showing blue. Because we have to wrap it special since it's purple. a magnet. Yeah, we have to wrap this special since it's a magnet, by the way, guys. <laughs> I went down to the post office and asked them. Because it'll get stuck on the things that, at the post office. And it's this one. They like and your t-shirt. orange. Then it's purple. Then it's... Like yes, thank you. I like my t-shirt too. Can you press this, please? I just asked you. I, I was done. I unplugged it. Why do you not answer me? Then we're doing this. Purple. No, I don't want purple next to purple. Orange. Blue. Purple. No. 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 That looks dumb. Orange. Purple. Blue. Orange. Purple. Then orange. Purple. Blue. Blue. No, that's dumb too. Why is it dumb? Stop being picky. Orange, I think it looks good. Right purple, there. Purple. Blue. Orange. Purple. Blue. Okay. Now we're just going to sew this together. So I'm going to take these two pieces right here and we're going to sew these two together. And then we'll go down to the next. Oops, and there's some paper on this one. Didn't even see that. But tell them that we don't mind if they watch somebody else while we're on. I don't mind that you guys watch someone else while I'm on. I think Karen Brown would just get it done. Quilts is on at the same time too. Okay, so these two are sewn. Then we're going to add this one to it. And again, I'm nesting all these seams, so I'm nesting the half square triangles. And then I'm nesting the centers, which I'm flipping seams for. And then nesting down here. Oh, and you guys can't even see because I'm on a different camera. Oops. We could put it in a plastic container patty, but we have to wrap it with cardboard. Yeah, we have to wrap it with card office. cardboard. All right, and then we're going to blue again. What's the name of the paper you used? It's it's so Emma triangle paper. It was the three and a half inch finished triangle paper. Fat quarter shop sells it. Yep, I'm on that. Finger pressing. I'm finger pressing all the seams on this top row to one side, and then that bottom row I'll press to the other way. So again, I'm just flipping these seams and then sewing down. Oops. I'm just sewing along with no bobbin thread. Put a bobbin in there. All right, let's try that again. So I'm just nesting my seams, nesting my seams. And I'm going to finger press this block to the right, grab the next one, quarter inch seam, sew up to that first seam, nest the bottom, sew up to that, finger press to the right. We got the magnetic seam guides at Walmart. We got the magnetic seam guides at Walmart. They were pretty cheap. 
All right, here we go. We're on the next row now. So I'm just nesting the seams. You can see I just fold them like this, and then I come down here and hold it with my finger. So that way you can see these mess match up. The center matches up nicely, and the top matches up nicely. I'm just going to keep going, and then we'll put both those rows together, and then we'll cut the fabric that Scott ironed into some strips for the border. Again, I'm finger pressing these ones to the left, so that way it nests with the top row. Oh my goodness, come on. Sometimes my finger pressing doesn't work very good. All right. This one, just holding the seams. All right, give me a second to pick names. Wait until I'm done with this. I can wait a minute. Again, finger pressing to the left. Give me a second to sew these and we'll draw two names. Okay, finger pressing to the left again. And one more. And we'll draw two names and then move on to sewing the two rows together. Again, finger pressing to the left. So let's go up here. Hi, everybody. So here is a row you can see. Oops, that way. And I'm going to sew the two rows together in a second. So let's see. Go over here to the raffle. And pick winner. First winner is Renee Brown. Renee Brown. Um, did I put this paper here? Brown. Send me an email, Renee Brown, to my email, which Scott will be putting the link in there. And we're going to pick winner number two. I got it. I got it. Is. Terry Cooper. Terry Cooper, you are winner number two. Please email me your mailing address and we will get these out to you. See? Look at that. Alright, complete. Back to this. So, you guys are marked. Everything is somewhere. Everything is somewhere. Put that over there for now. All right, now to sew my two rows together. So I'm just going to take these. You guys can't see them, but I'm putting them right sides together like this. And I have made these all go to the right, and these all went to the left. So all I need to do now is match the top, and I will be nesting each and every single one of these seams in between. So let's go to the machine so that you can see. So what I'm going to be doing is sewing through this whole thing, starting at the top, and I'll be nesting all these seams along the way. So the quarter inch seam, so you can see they're nested right up. Those nests. Some of the seams I'll have to flip because of the way that they are sewn or pressed, I should say. That was the word I was looking for. I'll just make that one go that way and this one go this way. Am I done ironing now? Nope. I'll iron this though. Okay. Well, I didn't know if I should unplug it. I'm almost done. I was wondering. Alright. So I'm just nesting the seam. You can see I sew up to that seam and then I leave my needle down, sew to the next. 
This keeps me from needing to use pins, which is amazing because it keeps me from poking the crud out of myself. And then nesting my final seam right here. And there we have it. So I'm going to take this now over to the iron and press it. And then we're going to cut some background fabric, which will be this big polka dot, I mean not background, um, border fabric, which would be that polka dot. And then we'll have a whole entire top done just like that. See something. Tiffy's newest bag. Yep, I gotta fin finish recreating that. It's a prototype, but I think it looks good. So that way you guys can have a video sooner or later on making it. Alright, so I'm just pressing my quilt top without borders so far, and all these seams coming together. I'm just being careful with the iron as I go over them. He says, you woke me up for this. He says, how dare you wake me up for this. I was sleeping good. Alright, let's cut some strips now. He says, oh, Mama's working. For the border. Mama's working. Let's help Mama. Alright, so let's go down to the cutting table after Scott I'm moves. I'm moving, I'm moving. Alright, so here is my fabric, and I can cut three and a half inch strips from it. What's the one feature on your sewing machine you can't live without? Uh, I don't have any features on my sewing machine except for the thread cutter. And I like having the thread cutter built on. So I guess I can't live without my thread cutter. Other than that, my machine is a straight stitch only. It has a needle up and down, and that's it. <laughs> All right. Nope. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm going to cut some 3.5 inch strips. 3.5. I should get three of them. 3.5 and 3.5. And three and Oops. Just like that. And then one will go on the top, one will go on the bottom, and two on the sides. So here's the quilt top. Watch this. We're going to put top and bottom on first, and then the sides. Because the top has room for this. So I'm just going to cut the selvage away. I'm going to grab this little ruler. I'm going to cut the selvage away right here. And I'm going to sew this on to one side, just like this, and it should end where I cut the selvage off at that end. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this seam on, and then sew the other one on. So you guys could just face me for the moment. So we'll sew this side on first, and then we'll sew the other side on. Press them back, and then sew the sides on. And then the top will be done. And then I could take it to the long arm another day and do whatever with it. So here we are coming up to the end. 
and I literally just sewed right off the end and you can see it was the right size all I have to do is trim away that piece right there which I'm gonna do just like this so that was just cutting off the selvage and like the black wall between the shots I say that's awesome the black wall between the shots yeah when you change the screen oh shots, yeah has a little black wall yeah okay so now I'm just gonna sew the opposite side on so I'm just gonna line it up right here I just cut the selvage off only I didn't cut off too much because right at the end of the selvage because I only have enough fab so much fabric only enough of this so I'm just sewing it on with my nice straight quarter inch seam because I have a seam guide keeping me sewing straight. <laughs> I don't know why I can't hold the fabric up against the line, the quarter inch line that's on the um, sewing machine. I can't, I can't hold my fabric up to it. I just can't do it. Yeah, it's because I sew fast. But even before I started using the Juki and I had a different machine, I still couldn't sew straight. So I don't think it was, I don't think it's completely just the sewing of going fast. So now I'm going to press these back and then add the two sides and then we'll be done. All right. I'm going to press back so easily. One, turn it around and do the other. All right, so, so far this is what I have. I just now need to add to the sides. So what I'm gonna do is cut the selvage off of one end piece it onto one side and then use the other end on the other side. Well, what's the size of our ironing board? Do you know My ironing board is 24 by 64. That's it? It's only 24? Yep. Why? Yep. Alright, so I'm just laying this on the side. Nope, it's 26 and a half. Oh, 26 and a half. So good. So now I'm going to fold it on top of itself. By 65. Nice and straight. And this is how I'm going to get my straight end for the next side. And I'm just going to cut right here at this fold that I created. So off of that, turn it to the other side. And now I don't have to get up and do anything because all I need to do is take this side that I just cut nice and straight onto this over here. Then the only thing I'll have left to do is cut off the salvage. So I'm sewing right to the end. And then I have a little bit of hangover, you can see right here. I'm just going to cut that off, press it back, and I'll be done. Time or birthdays. This can be put on a table for birthdays or spring or whatever. Now let's clean this little area up so that I can lay it out for you guys to see the whole thing. Because I'm done. Put this on the back. Whatever I want to put on the back, I was going to load it on the long arm. So yeah, I'm just saying what were you've got in your mind. I so don't maybe have. Maybe you had something picked out. No, nope, I didn't pick anything out yet. Oh, okay. All sorry. right, there is the finished table runner. I should just keep my big mouth shut. Um, let's go this <laughs> way a little so you can see. Oh, you can't see that side. There it is. 
So this is the project that I got in my Open Gates quilt box a couple months ago. This was the Dots On You body pillow or table runner. It's supposed to be 48 by 20. Let's see. It's actually 20 and 3 quarters by... Let's see, let's see, let's see. And I have binding for it too, but that'll be after I quilt it because I'm going to quilt it on the long arm. 25 and 25 is 50. So it's 50 by 20 and 3 quarters. Right there. So there it is. All done. I like it. It's adorable. And this was the black version and a pillow. That's the black pillowed version that came in as the picture, but she had the white version in some people's boxes and the black version in other people's boxes. And then it's going to get bound in this orange, just like that. And it went with the theme that month of the box, which was polka dots, because my little other project that came in that box was polka dots that month. So you there corners. is that. Yes, I miter all my corners. Here's binding on this and yes. Oh, you mean corners on the borders? Yes, I do miter borders, but there wasn't enough fabric for this to have mitered borders at this size. Or else I could have, but... Yeah, that was the question. When you're yeah, no. Borders, do you ever do yes, a miter I miter borders, but not on stuff like this. This, I just throw it together. So, there it is. Alright, let's come to this face one... All right, does anybody have any questions? Because I'm done and it's time for me to relax, kick my feet up, and eat some dinner. Just tell them to email you. Oh, and don't forget, if you were the winners, uh, wherever I stuck the names, I don't even know now. They're right there. You can get them. Oh, Rena and Terry, Rena Brown and Terry Cooper, don't forget to shoot me an email with your address so that I can get these off into the mail tomorrow. So, all right, guys. Well, if there is no questions, I'm going to get off here and go kick my feet up. And I'm probably going to go watch Becca because she's probably still on. So, anyway, oh. thank you guys for watching. I don't see any questions. Hold on, hold on. Let me type in Becca's thing one last time. And I'm going to head over and watch my friend Becca. There should be a link now. If you haven't subscribed to her channel already, head over there because I hang out there every single Friday night and most of her other live streams. So, and watch all of her videos. She's my friend and we have lots of fun. So anyway, thank you guys all for hanging out and I'll see you next time.